How do human-made pollutants affect the pH of rainfall? How does polluted rainfall affect plants? This is acid rain. How could it be that using electricity generated from a coal-fired power plant or driving a gasoline or diesel-powered car contributes a little bit to acid rain? Well, it turns out that carbon and sulfur that was once stored in the ground is released into the atmosphere when you burn fossil fuels. Rain is naturally acidic around a pH of 5.5 because sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide are found naturally in the atmosphere. But human activities like the combustion of fossil fuels adds much more of these gases to the atmosphere than would naturally accumulate over a given period of time. In this investigation, we are going to generate carbon dioxide gas and sulfur dioxide gas and see what those gases do to the pH of water. Then, we will make simulated acid rain and see what happens to a living plant when it is exposed to acid rain. I have labeled six pipettes to help keep track of which substances to combine in order to make and collect carbon dioxide gas and sulfur dioxide gas. First, I will combine baking soda and vinegar to make carbon dioxide gas. Then I'm gonna collect the carbon dioxide gas and watch what happens to the pH of water as I bubble the gas into this water. Next, I will combine sodium bisulfite and vinegar to make sulfur dioxide gas and see what happens to water pH when I bubble SO2 gas into the water. Next, I will use sulfuric acid to make two different samples of simulated acid rain. And finally, I'm gonna design my own experiment to test the effect of acid rain on living things using some small plants. You can use my experiment design for inspiration if you wish, but you will need to come up with your own experiment design to test the effect of acid rain on plants. I've already connected the pH sensor to my computer, so we are ready to start the investigation. There are four parts to this investigation, and because the final part of the procedure is intended for your own experiment design, your teacher may have you use my data, or they may ask you to collect your own data. Just be sure to follow your teacher's directions and only record my data if your teacher says to do so. For part one, we will see how the addition of carbon dioxide gas affects the pH of pure water. I'm going to squeeze and hold pipette 1A and push it down into this cup filled with baking soda to fill the pipette with some baking soda. Next, I will fill pipette 1B with vinegar. Now I can insert pipette 1B into pipette 1A and squeeze to slowly let 20 drops of vinegar to fall into the baking soda. So right now this reaction is producing carbon dioxide, which you can see as bubbles. Once all 20 drops are in, I'm done with pipette 1B now if I squeeze and hold pipette 1C and insert it into pipette 1A, I can use pipette 1C to collect carbon dioxide gas produced from the baking soda and vinegar reaction. Next, I'll place the pH sensor into the 25 milliliters of distilled water and start collecting data. Since I don't have a lab partner uh, to help me stir and hold the pH sensor, I added a micro stirrer and a ring stand to my setup. And when I say to record a value, you might want to pause the video so you can write down the data on your paper, then resume play when you are ready to continue. Record the initial pH in table one once it stabilizes. Okay, now I'm going to squeeze the carbon dioxide gas contents of pipette 1C into the water and stir the solution while continuing to collect pH data. Then I will stop collecting data once, once pH stabilizes. And here we go. And we will speed up data collection for you. Now that the pH has stabilized, 
Record the final pH value in table one. Pause the video so you can determine the change in pH and record it in table one. Then resume play when you're ready to continue. Let me rinse the pH sensor and now we can move on to part two where we'll see how the addition of sulfur dioxide gas affects the pH of pure water. I'm going to collect some sodium bisulfite in pipette 2A. Then I'm going to fill pipette 2B with some vinegar. If I insert pipette 2B into pipette 2A and add 20 drops of vinegar, you'll see a reaction happening and sulfur dioxide gas will be forming. But in this reaction, the formation of sulfur dioxide gas is not as apparent. Once all the vinegar is added, I can use pipette 2C to collect the sulfur dioxide gas that was produced from this reaction. I have a new beaker filled with, or a new cup rather, filled with distilled water. Let me switch that first. We're going to get the initial pH. I'm going to start collecting data. Record the initial pH in table one once it stabilizes. Now I'm going to squeeze the sulfur dioxide gas contents of pipette 2C into the water and allow data collection to continue. Collecting pH data. I'll stop collecting data when pH stabilizes. Here we go. We'll speed up data collection for you. Now that the pH has stabilized, record the final pH value in table one. Pause the video so you can determine the change in pH and record it in table one then resume play when you are ready to continue. I'm going to rinse the pH sensor, and then we can move on to part three while I will make simulated acid rain from distilled water and sulfuric acid. Let's start with the control, which is tap water, representing ordinary rain. I'm going to start collecting data. And I'm going to put the pH sensor in that tap water. There we go, and when the pH value stabilizes, record the pH for the control in the space provided at the top of table two, where you see the control column header. Okay, Let's stop there. I made acid rain solution one by adding five milliliters of 0.025 molar sulfuric acid to 250 milliliters of distilled water in this bottle. Let's see where the pH is at. We're gonna aim for a value, pH value between three and four. I'm gonna start collecting data. And here we are, we're gonna wait for that pH to stabilize. Okay, the pH looks pretty stable. It looks good. I'm gonna stop collecting data. This is an acceptable pH, so you can record this value at the top of table two in the acid rain column one, acid rain one column header. 
I made acid rain two solution by adding just a little, just a couple milliliters of 0.025 molar sulfuric acid to 250 milliliters distilled water in this bottle. And on this one, we're aiming for a pH value between 4.5 and 5.3. So I'm going to start collecting data and we're gonna wait for the pH to stabilize. Okay, that looks pretty good. That's an acceptable pH, so you can record this value for pH at the top of table two in the acid rain two column header. Finally, we're ready for part four, where the procedure says to design your own investigation to test how acid rain affects living things, specifically plants. You will have to come up with your own procedure for watering small potted plants over one school week or more. I'll share my procedure. Um, yours might be similar, but it can't be exactly the same as mine. I'll be using these petunia plants, which are all about the same size and the same state of health to begin with. One plant is labeled control, a second plant is labeled acid rain one, and a third plant is labeled acid rain two. I'll pour the solutions from part three into three different spray bottles of the same type and size to set the spray and set to the same uh, spray size. I'm gonna spray each plant 10 times or with 10 spritzes from the designated bottle that matches the plant starting today at a distance of about three inches from the plant to ensure a consistent spray diameter for each sample. I'm gonna take a second and fill up my bottles and I'm gonna transfer the labels to the bottle so I can keep track and not lose sight of which solution is in which bottle. Okay, this one is acid rain one. I already had my control in the spray bottle and now acid rain two. label on there. So every day we will make observations of the plants just before watering. So record your observations of all three plants for day one across the first row in table two. Here's control. And I'm going to switch now to acid rain one, and remember you can always hit pause if you need more time. And here is acid rain two. And now it's time to water the plants. I'll start with control. Check my label, 10 spritzes, about three centimeters or inches rather. Oh, gotta, I gotta prime the bottle. There it goes. There's 10. Acid rain one is next. So I'm priming the bottle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And finally, acid rain two. And let's check back at 24 hours. It's now day two and these plants have been sitting in the windowsill for 24 hours. Let's make the observations before I water them. This is the control. Now 
This is acid rain one. And this is acid rain two. Control, acid rain one, acid rain two. I'm gonna water these again and then put them back in the windowsill and we'll check back tomorrow on day three in 24 hours. This is day three and the plants have been sitting in the window for uh, it's indoors in the windowsill for 24 hours. Let's make the observations of the plants before I water the plants for today. This is the control. This is acid rain one. And this is acid rain two. Control. Acid rain one. Acid rain two. It's been 24 hours and now it's day four. Make your observations before I water the plants. This is the control. This is acid rain one. And this is acid rain two. Control. Acid rain one. Acid rain two. It's day five and this is the last day to record data. This is the control. This is acid rain one. And this is acid rain two. Control. Acid rain one, and acid rain two. Now you have enough data to complete the analysis and, and moving on to that next section. Your teacher may tell you to go ahead and complete the questions and analysis with the data from my experiment design, or your teacher might ask you to design your own experiment, collect your own data, and answer the questions and analysis based on your data. Even if you are instructed to use my data, take the time to design your own experiment to test the effects of acid rain on plants. If you're using my data, here are some tips. You can change the run in the digits display by opening the menu and choosing the run you want, but you'll only see the last data point collected at the end of the run. In the graph, use the legend to either hide or show runs using the check mark. You can expand the graph with the scale button, but follow your teacher's instructions and good luck with your investigation.